Ladies and gentlemen, what is happening? I am back with another Scarlet and Violet Wi-Fi battle, and in today's match I decided there's so many crazy Pokemon running around these days. I figure, why not bring Ditto, and then I can just be all of them. And that's what we're doing. So my opponent is going to go ahead and lead off with their Cleaver, and I decide to toss out Lil' Jelly. I say, damn, Shiny Cleaver looks actually pretty sick. Let me, let me steal that from you real quick, and now I am Shiny Cleaver. And this does a couple things. I wanted to be able to set up the Stone Axe to be able to get the Stealth Rock, but also it gives me a look at their moveset, which can kind of just tell me a lot about the set they're running. Could be potentially choice. I know they're going to be a Terra uh, with that Terra Blast. So I just decided to go for that Stone Axe. It does set up Stealth Rock in the process, as they actually end up switching into Great Tusk. So they don't like the Ditto matchup. Uh, the reason why this thing comes in is likely because I set up the Stealth Rock, but now it can just Rapid Spin that shit away. Uh, but Ditto is going to be a good asset for me to keep in the back pocket. So I do want to switch out here. I have no business fighting against a Great Tusk. And I decide to bring in the Gastrodon. It does do uh, a great job at walling against the Great Tusk. I can either set up Stealth Rock again if I want to after the Rapid Spin. Or I can just kind of force this thing out uh, with some, uh, some Surf shenanigans. But looking at the team matchup, they do have a Amoongus on their side of the field. And that... Is it a very annoying Pokemon? I don't actually have a Grass type, but what I do have is a Ditto and a Plan. So here's what I'm going to do. I'm expecting them to switch into the Amoongus. So I'm going to go ahead and bring in the Grimmsnarl. The reason for that is because if they didn't go Amoongus, I could actually just stay in, get up my uh, some of my screens, and then Parting Shot. But now, I do see the Amoongus come in. It's the best check to my Gastrodon, which is pretty obvious. And now I can get a nice little Parting Shot. And if he wants to spore me, he's going to have a bad time because I... Have a little jelly so i do go for that parting shot switching all over the fucking place uh do drop this thing special attack which actually is important uh, for the ditto matchup it's not going to be able to do as much if it does have that sludge bomb coverage uh, so of course i do have to bring in ditto here anytime you see an amoongus your ass is about to be put to sleep 100 percent of the time unless you have a grass type which i don't so i just have to steal there so i turn into amoongus myself uh, and now I get to see kind of what this Amoongus is working with and if we're going to be able to make any progress here. So it turns out I'm not seeing any reliable recovery. I can actually just go for a few sludge bombs. My plan is basically just to whittle this thing down, get enough chip to where I can take it out with something else pretty easily. So uh, my sludge bomb is, you know, not doing a whole lot, uh, but we're not really making great progress against each other. Like I said, I just want to be able to get... Uh, some good chip here and plus he's not going to be inclined to now go for the spore against his own Amoongus so then I can freely bring in the Arcanine so Hisuian Arcanine comes in looking about regal as fuck my dude is straight up got that stone statue energy and he's a former alpha even though in this game the yeah, alpha Pokemon don't even keep their size which kind of sucks but I come in on a sludge bomb which is exactly what I wanted and now I'm going to go for the flare blitz however they do have that great tusk in the back and that thing is annoying this Amoongus and great tusk are really breaking my ball, so I gotta figure out a way to get past that. And my plan is to just go for the Fire Terra, boost my uh, my Flare Blitz damage to the point where it'll do just enough for a two-hit KO. So, ordinarily, Hisuian Arcanine just clicks that base 150 stab head smash with no recoil because of Rock Head, but in this situation, it's also super nice to have the Flare Blitz and not have to worry about the recoil on that as well. So, I put some candles on my head, and now I just bash the fuck out of them right into the tusks, and it actually does enough damage to looking like it's kind of a roll on whether or not it's going to kill. Uh, and I'm feeling like, you know what, I'm tired of switching around. I'm just going to go for that Flare Blitz, roll the damage and go with it. But he actually expects me to switch back into my Gastrodon and therefore brings back an Amoongus. And quite the surprise on this incoming Amoongus, he's going to come right into a nice little Flare Blitz. And that is definitely going to take that thing out. So I do get rewarded for having Arcanine Balls of Steel staying in and trying to get that damage against the Great Tusk. So that is amazing. Amoongus is an extremely annoying Pokemon out of the way. And now also Gastrodon uh, is kind of opened up quite a bit. So they now get a revenge switch in. They decide to go into Cleaver and I can't really stay in in Flare Blitz here. Plus Choice Scarf Arcanine in the back is way too useful to, to waste here. So I am going to end up switching. I'm going to go right into the coffee table. It is Flat Fuck Friday. And we are celebrating <laughs> in the form of Hisuian Avalug. This thing looks sick as hell. It has horrible typing for competitive. It's helped a little bit with Terra. Of course, I've used my Terra in this match, but I come in on a Stone Axe. It does set up Stealth Rock. Uh, and now this thing is going to U-turn. I go for the Ice Fang. And the reason for that is I, I don't want to go for Mountain Gale just to miss. It's actually pretty close, similar damage with that uh, Strong Jaw. 
Uh, but he actually ends up bringing in Anamorous right into a nice little Ice Monch, and that is able to take care of that thing. Uh, he said he actually expected the ground move there, uh, which would have been a great play for Momentum, but the Ice Ice Fang does take care of Anamorous, which is actually like one of the more scary Pokemon in the meta right now. So that thing is gone. But unfortunately, Hisuian Samurott is not going to be playing that ship and does come in to uh, finish me off here. So, uh, a coffee table did what it needed to do, though. I'm honestly <laughs> pretty happy being able to take care of Enamorous. And now I get a free switch. So Gastrodon comes in, no longer fearing the mushrooms. That thing was sautéed minutes ago, and uh, I don't have to worry about a grass attack. I do kind of wall this Samurott here, and I decide to just try to um, set back up this Stealth Rock as back comes freaking Great Tusk. So... Um, he probably just does expect that Stealth Rock be able to rapid spin that shit away. Uh, but still, this is a fine matchup for me because I can uh, I can definitely just knock this thing out with a Surf. Plus, I am physically defensive and not super worried about either of the stabs that uh, Great Tusk has. So, I can set up the Stealth Rock and now he's expecting him to go for that rapid spin, which he does. I just am able to finish this thing off with a Surf. Great Tusk thinks he's all cool until a Slug throws some water at him. Also, does it look like Sunny Day is set up on the battlefield? It must be just like... Straight up high noon out here. It's bright as shit. I gotta have my trainer sunglasses on and my little my little sunglasses on Gastrodon as well. But a surf does take care of it. Uh, and down goes Great Tusk, which is another big threat out of the way. So, they do get a revenge switch. And they also still have a Hisuian Zorark in the mix. And I'm kind of worried about that thing being, being around and annoying. But in comes Samurott. And I'm thinking if there's a time for Zorark to come out, it's probably... Right about now, knowing that uh, you know Gastrodon does have a good matchup against Samurott ordinarily, he does end up going for the Hyper Voice there. Yells at me, but the Slug is too damn thick. I'm able to live that and then fire back uh, with a nice little Earth Power, which does reveal the Zorark, but also more importantly, getting that solid chip damage. Um, so I know that I don't really have many options to switch into a Hyper Voice here, so I kind of just have to let this thing go down but it's done what it needed to do i don't have to worry about the great tusk anymore which is kind of the main thing i'm around for and so one more hyper voice does take care of it but squishy you've done a fantastic job and uh now i get a free switch but there is still a lot of work to do they got some big threats still on their side and i decide now is a good time to bring in the cleavage i'm thinking potentially i know i can take a hyper voice from this thing uh, i can likely then set up an agility be faster than everything i then can probably outplay their cleaver and it's time to get some cleaving going, you know what I'm saying? But uh, I do go for that agility. He's going to hit me with the Hyper Voice, which I do resist because I'm a rock bug boy. And I move myself back and forth a few times, which makes me fast as fuck boy. Uh, and now I can just basically outspeed this thing, finish it off with a Stone Axe, and get my Stealth Rock up for like the ninth time this match. I say, God damn it, these Stealth Rocks are staying over here. I swear to God. So, uh, Zorak goes down. He now has two Pokemon left. It is going to be their own cleaver along with the Hisuian Samurott. So... Yeah, I set up that Stealth Rock, which is actually kind of nice. Get that little extra damage coming in. Uh, as he decides to bring in his Cleaver, who's looking a little sick compared to mine. So, <laughs> nice and green. Comes in, takes some solid Stealth Rock damage. And now I'm thinking a Stone Axe. I should be able to take care of this thing, hopefully. Uh, but it turns out he actually is going to use his Terra. So we saw with Ditto earlier, this thing was running the Terra Blast. So now we get to see it's actually working with the Terra Dragon. So that is quite a menacing looking Cleaver over there with his... Uh, with his cool little wings on his head. And I do hit him with the Stone Axe. Unfortunately, I do not actually. It misses, because of course it does. That would have been nice to just get a little bit of extra, you know, damage there. But hits me with the Terra Blast, and I do not have enough HP to take that. So down goes my Cleaver, who was fast as hell, but didn't really get to, you know, use it too much. The chip would have been really nice. Uh, it wouldn't have knocked out their Cleaver, but still... Uh, it would have put it in range for anything else to take care of it, but I do still have the Grimmsnarl on my team. Prankster Grimmsnarl is like one of the most valuable things to have around, I swear to god. As long as the Light Clay item isn't banned, it's extremely nice to get those Reflect turns. Uh, especially in a situation where, yeah, this Cleaver can do some pretty serious damage and I can't really one-hit KO it here other than with like a Head Smash, which I run the risk of missing. So I go for that Reflect, allows me to take an X Scissor real nice, uh, and it also helps me out that this thing is... Uh, running with that Dragon Terra. I was hoping it was Choice, so it was stuck in a Terra Dragon move, but it is not, and then a Play Rough does take care of it. So, down to one more Pokemon left. I have the Reflect up uh, against the Hisuian Samurott, so I'm feeling good, but it's a scary-ass Pokemon to deal with. So, this thing comes in, it is full health. Uh, after a little bit of Stealth Rock damage, it's looking like it's close to range uh, for Arcanine to finish off, but I go for the Play Rough here, it's obviously going to outspeed, finish me off with a Razor Shell. So, Here's the plan. Arcanine Head Smash should be enough to knock this thing out. But 
you run the risk of head smash missing, which as of late has been missing a lot. And honestly, I'm kind of scared to click it. I, I, I want to be able to do it uh, just to, to flex the Arcanine off on him. But I do actually carry wild charge coverage here. And while I know this thing can likely live it, it's actually going to put it into range where then hopefully Ditto can finish it off for me. So I don't want to miss the, rock, uh, the head smash. I go for that wild charge. It does live it in red. I knew it was pretty close for that thing to be able to take that, but it finishes me off with a Razor Shell, and now we're both down to our last Pokemon, uh, but luckily my last Pokemon is his last Pokemon, and I'm Choice Scarf, so I should be able to uh, outspeed, and Arcanine did most of the work putting that thing to range where I should be easily able to take care of it. So Ditto comes in one last time looking happy as hell, um, and I just get to turn into a, yet another Hisuian Shiny that I don't have yet, so... Now I do, <laughs> and I'm an imposter bitch. So I just go for a razor shell here, uh, just to ensure that that is going to knock it out. And that is going to be the end of the game, ladies and gentlemen. Ditto coming in relatively clutch. You love to see it. Ditto's a very fun Pokemon to work with, especially when there's just kind of like uh, a, lot of, a lot of crazy opportunity Pokemon running around on the other side. So thank you guys very much for watching. I do appreciate all the support, and I will see you next time. Peace out.